Okay, and welcome to another Tesla Coil Tuesday. Now, this will probably be the last Tesla Coil Tuesday that I upload for a while because, well, you know, I've got things to get on with and uh, other things I want to do. My IGBT ZVS driver is one of them. Need to do some work on that. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you this little driverless Tesla coil that I've made. Gaze upon the circuits and admire my wondrous design. Okay, this is based on something I found on the internet, but this is the schematic of the Tesla coil. So all this here is what makes it work. And there's absolutely no driver circuit whatsoever. This here, this is the interrupter that I came up with. The interrupter is not the same one that the original circuit used because that used a triple five timer and a few other things. And I thought I could make a, well, simpler version of that that syncs itself up with the mains frequency. And I thought I could build it, well, out of discrete components. So what I've got here is something that will turn mains frequency into variable pulse width. So we get little bursts of high frequency power. And I found that using two IRF 840s instead of an IRF 450 worked better, so... That's actually two IRF 840s in parallel, not an IRF 450, because I was originally going to use an IRF 450, but it didn't give me very good results. So, got two 840s in parallel there. So, let's power this thing up and see what it can do. It's not all that impressive, but... It works. Okay, I'm gonna have to shoot this bit again because my stupid camera was paused the whole time while I thought it was recording, and recording the whole time while I thought it was paused. So, show you a little run of the tester coil. It's not all that impressive, but... So, um, as you can see, we have light, we have... So, uh, as you can see, we have electricity come out and uh, nice purple lightning bolts. So you can see that works, and the interrupter is doing its thing, and there's a nice smell of ozone in the air now. So now I'm going to adjust the interrupter while this thing is running. It's about the weakest sparks right there. It's about there. So that works pretty good. Okay, and I'm back, and I can show you this weird thing now. So I've changed the primary, and I've got my breakout point mounted on the thing there. I'll just show you the range of sparks we get. So this is the interrupter at its lowest setting. And then we go up to sparks like this. Now here's the weird thing, if I try to draw an arc, let's just turn the interrupter up a little bit more, I get constant wave sparks, which is kind of weird. And that's kind of weird. I'll just check my transistors are not hot. Nope, they're not hot. It's weird that the interrupter seems to stop when I do that. But then starts again when I do that. So again, we get sparks like this. Going to like that. And like this again. Anyway, let's just turn that off so you can hear me again. That's another Tesla Coil Tuesday. Probably the leanest one I'm going to upload for a while, because I'm going to be working on a really big Tesla Coil. Although, when and even if I'll ever get round to that is another thing entirely. But, until next time, goodbye.